Welcome, welcome, welcome to Plenty Face Syndicate, Star Wars Unlimited Edition. This is episode three, I Cannot Be Captured. I mean, I probably could, because I'm not going to run very fast, but some other people might not be captured. Tonight, we've got two episodes for Star Wars Unlimited content into the bag, and we are here to talk about the capture mechanic, as well as some of the spoilers from set two. If that wasn't enough for you, we're also going to touch on the Orlando 5K just briefly, as we probably don't want to go super in depth into all the lists. A, given that um, we don't know how prominent these decks are, or if some of these decks are just a passing phase. With that being said, we're also going to be talking a little bit about kind of deck building with our four cause segments, where we're going to basically take a leader and an aspect, and we're going to go ahead and break it down how I would build it, how each of the other hosts would build it, and which one we feel might be better. Now, with that being said, let me bring in my co-host for tonight. Please welcome to the show, Mr. JJ. Your hair looks so much better than the hat you usually wear. Good <laughs> iron. How are you tonight, sir? <laughs> I'm doing all right. I actually did the haircut last night. Uh, it was getting a little out of control and itchy, so I had to like completely like cut it all off. Um, but yeah, I had a had a great week so far. I was able to get a, a game of X-Wing in person this week, uh, further um, like testing out an archetype that I've been using for Rebels. It's a lot of fun. And uh, just prepping for Richmond Open, uh, which is going to be a GT um, here in Richmond, Virginia next weekend. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to go. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, also joining us tonight is the bench warmer himself, Mr. Alex, not wearing his normal T-shirt. How are you tonight, sir? Oh, I'm good. I mean, it's still between the Barry to be shirt, which is like 30% of my wardrobe anyway, so. <laughs> this, this one's very colorful. It is. Sure. It's high okay. I got that at, I think, a concert in 2022 is what I want to go with. Well, wow, I, um, I don't remember them having tie-dye shirts, so that's cool. Yeah, it was a small venue out in uh, Pontiac, the Crowfoot. Really cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm excited. Uh, looking at Green Luke, you know, played a buddy you had it. Uh, it's, it's, it's an annoying deck. <laughs> yeah, and it's, so it's which is, it. yeah, which is funny because you mentioned you mentioned that in the chat before you're like, hey, let's talk about uh, Green Luke and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, well, that's the what this is my deck that I built. And you're like, let's do a list building challenge. It's like, oh, fuck. That means he doesn't <laughs> like my list. So, um, but that's fun. Uh, it, it'll be a good time. We haven't done that yet. So I thought that that I do think that that could be that could be a fun type of segment that we can kind of do um, on and off here. Um, my weekend was very like super fast uh, my daughter's play was this week uh so there was plays like all the nights um i played unlimited on wednesday and then as well on thursday i got roped into it i wasn't going to play because i was late i was just there to pick up some cards for jj and then i got roped into like hey well that's fine we got one other person that's late too if you guys can knock a game out real quick we can we get you in for the tournament and so um, that was kind of fun. I went three and one. I lost to a Boba Green um, that had like the best draw in the world. And I had the worst draws in the world. And I did make a mistake. I do remember going back and doing a traitorous and picking the like trying to do a traitorous and then going, oh, that's a four cost. Can't do that. So I just picked a three cost versus going back and just replaying a different card, which would have been smarter. And then in the long run, I that that they they got rid they killed the unit with traitorous and it didn't matter. So. It was pr over pretty quickly, but every other game was super fun. Um, running, I've been running Palp Red. If, if I guess if you didn't know, that's kind of like the, the, I've been running it because I find it super fun to play. That's why. Um, so, and then we had I went and saw Stabbing Westward this weekend at a very small venue called Smalls in uh, Hamtramck. <laughs> And like last time I was in Hamtramck, I mean, this is like years. I've never been to this venue, but I bet was like there like, I don't know, over 10 years ago. And like, I all I remember is that I was told, like, don't park on the street, blah, blah, blah. I got there. There there was nothing like there was like, I don't know. Like I did take money out of my wallet. I wasn't walking around with a lot of cash just in case we got mugged. But like, I mean, there was none of that. Like it was like a perfect neighborhood. Like people were waving at us saying hi at like one in the morning. It was nothing. So um i don't know sometimes i think people just say crazy shit 
But uh, I don't know. It was, that was fun. I went and saw Sammy Westward, and then I had to go to – my daughter had a, a concert again. So I don't think I was home more than 10 hours, 11 hours a day in the last, like, three days. So, yeah. Yeah, no, Hamtramck is notorious for having those potholes that swallow your entire car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, like, news articles about it. It's actually really funny. But, yeah, it's, it's a nice little Polish neighborhood. Yeah, so that was fun. So we, we had a pretty fun weekend. Um, very excited. If you are listening, you live in Michigan, and you would like to attend, we still have, like, a couple of spots left for our... May the 4th in Zealand. Um, we are doing a May the 4th uh, tournament, and it would be super awesome if people came. Um, I know some of you Eastsiders, there might be other things going on, but it would be awesome if you came and hung out with us as well. I think Alex is coming over, or at least Alex told me he was coming over, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm making my way up, or across, I guess. Yeah. See, and I was even nice and didn't make it super early for you, so you didn't have to get up at like like 6 in the morning. But uh, we're gonna be. We're actually. I got to talk to the the owner and see if we can use the TV. And I think I just might loop like Star Wars movies in the back and just like kind of yeah. put it on mute and figure. I mean, they, there's a TV. It's just like half leaning against the wall. So I was like, well, what if I propped it up a little bit and stuck my laptop? To, do you think I could just do that? Like, I can make half the screen the movie and half the screen like, like you know, the clock or something. I don't know. I don't know how you how you would do that. But just troll um, everyone and play like the first season of Stargate. <laughs> no, I, I could do that. They did. They they were playing that at Worlds this year. Actually. Stargate. Yeah, like, I love Stargate. It was funny because I was walking out of one of the events. And Jay, there's Jake, one of uh, the locals that uh, comes to the wharf. He was like sitting there. I was like, "Hey, you wait for Brendan?" He's like, "Oh yeah." I was like, "What's this?" He's like, "Oh, this is Stargate. Have you ever seen this?" I was like, "I've never seen this movie. I guess so. I've seen the TV shows, but I don't think I've ever actually seen the movie." So yeah, the movie's the movie's okay. The TV show's really good though. But it's just funny because it's right in front of all the Star Wars content. They had the big TV playing Stargate. So awesome. All right. Well, what do we want to get into first, boys? Do you want to get into spoilers or do you want to get into loot decks first? Uh, let's do the spoilers. I think uh, we'll, we'll pick off where we left off last week. All right. And we also have four new ones from this week that we're going to we're going to pick up on oh, those yeah. too. So, all right. Uh, get ready for our Galactic Gazette. On our Galactic Gazette tonight, we have a bunch of, not a bunch, okay, we have four new spoilers, one which I'm insanely excited about. The other ones I'm not quite as excited about, but maybe maybe that will change as uh, as we talk about them. So the first one, JJ, the first one is an IG-11, not an IG-88, so it's not exactly your murder bot droid, but it's kind of similar. JJ, what is the first spoiler FFG gave us? So uh, we have a Red Aspect IG-11 droid uh, coming at a 5 cost with uh, 6 attack and 5 health. Uh, he reads, if this unit would be captured, defeat him and deal 3 damage to every enemy ground unit instead. On attack, you may deal 3 damage to a damaged ground unit as well. So that means that when he does attack, he does 3 damage before he deals his normal 6 there. Uh, fantastic card. Like, this is really great to get up in in a uh, really good like aggressive decks that wants to uh attack enemy bases and stuff and still deal damage to enemy units a uh, great way to get around uh some of the lower sentinel cards that are out there that are low health um or just deal uh, damage to some of those low health support cards that are out there as well um and the fact that it uh if they if they try to do traitorous on it and it basically self-destructs and deals damage everything to it i mean it's it's really good well, you no, can't no. do traitorous though. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's four cost. cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's also traitorous is just take control. That's not being captured. Captured is a keyword yeah. specific to this set. So yeah, yeah, good point. But man, Still. his breach because uh, if you happen to be attacking like a damaged unit uh, mm -hmm. and he swings in, he can swing in for nine, which is to the same unit, which is crazy. Like if Palpatine had one damage, you could just straight kill Palpatine and actually live through it too, which is even more silly. Yeah. So the question I have, so the first question I have a is, do we have another unit that is a six, five at five cost? I, I don't think we do. No, 
Uh, I can't really think of any. Because Bosk is what a four, a four or five. five. Yeah. With and that's ambulance. a five cost. And he does like, I, I understand why they might be costing this lower, but like this seems like an insanely good card for five costs. Like this seems yeah. really, really good. It's an auto include at this at that cost. Like you, you just got to have it. I mean, like you could put this in a Sabine deck too, right? Like, I mean, yeah. Rebels may not like it as much because it's not a Rebel unit, but this is just this is a neutral red, and it's an uncommon for Christ's sake. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it seems pretty strong, especially in like um like a Vader deck, right? Because you can because you, you ping one damage with Vader's ability. So units will typically be damaged at some point, right? Yeah. So it's it's also kind of funny if you do it against like a Luke, if you manage to like Vader them a damage before he puts on the shield, and IG can attack him and then three damage and take off the shield and swing in for full six. Which is pretty nasty if you have like a an Obi Wan uh, Sentinel unit or something like that. Yeah. And also the the this like bombing run, but only for your enemies too. It's just the if it would be captured, just blow them up. Yeah, and so the question is 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 we how many we've only seen what one capture bounty? That's it, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So yeah, there was we so we don't know exactly all the other bounties that are going to come about for captured. But I mean, this unit basically says you cannot capture me. Now, could you imagine being a Palpatine player and then stealing this, you know, turn eight when you come out? Like, oh, I'm just going to take your IG. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and then, like, by the time you get to turn eight, too, and you steal, and you, so you now you're stealing someone's IG unit, and then you're able to just, like, do nine damage. Like, you're just able to find a unit that's been damaged and just do nine damage to it. It's just crazy. Yeah, I like him a lot. It'll be uh, interesting to see how much, uh, like you said, how much capture mechanics left or just in the game. Yeah. Now, the question I have is, is so this is this is going to be interesting. Can you try to capture your own unit? I don't think that they've declared that you cannot do that. Logically speaking, you should not be able to capture your own unit. But could you imagine just being able to try to capture and then do and because because here it says not the person capturing. It says three damage to enemies ground units. So you could like, you could have them on one health or something. And instead yeah. of swinging out, cause it doesn't do a lot of damage. You could try to capture your own unit. And again, we don't know for sure if they're going to allow this or not, but if you could try to play a capture card on your own unit, he blows up and still does the three, the, the bombing run damage. Like that's just crazy, right? Like that seems like that seems really bad. Yeah. I feel like captures are going to be enemy units only. I hope so. But, IG-11 is hilarious in Twin Sons because you're just nuking every person's board. That's not yes. yours. <laughs> That's true. Everybody gets it. Ugh. It'd be fun to like also try to <laughs> team them up with IG-88. Just make a bunch of droids. Because then, you know, it kind of fits right in there. He does. And he he would, like I'm, again, even if you don't care about the capture piece, he still is a six. He hits for six and he comes out at a, a, a round five, right? Like, and so the question becomes is like, is there going to be a value to to this in terms of like changing up maybe a green yellow deck that we know is super prominent right now, right? Like, could, could Boba become a yellow red deck all of a sudden because there's a few more cards that are giving him. Or you could be Han red and just pull him out right. on turn three. Yeah, you could do that too. It and just now a lot of chaos. Yeah, and you and to some extent, if you think about it, you almost have a unit that's like Han Solo, but not quite. Like I guess you still take all the damage first, but I mean, you could still use shoot first on the stupid thing. Yep. Like, and yeah, and the on attack is just like Boba, right? So it's it's identical to Boba Fett. So the on attack is going to trigger first before you even get to the the deal damage. So if you're if the other unit only needs three damage it, and you don't need the six damage somewhere else, you can literally just do swing at it, do the on attack first and move on and just be yeah. like, oh, I'm done. That's what JJ was saying with like some of the Sentinels, because a lot of them have like three health, like your echo base yeah. defender, your cell block guard. He just shows up. Granted, they have to be damaged, though. So it's yeah. more of like a. 
slightly situational, but uh, maybe the like Homestead Militia, right? That's a 3-4. If they're taking one damage, you can walk in there and just auto-kill them. Well, and I think the other thing, too, is is like if you get rid of whatever the pings are, right? If you think about it in a Rebel deck, for example, sometimes you run some of those lower cost, like one hit units. All that unit has to do is swing in for the one for IG to all of a sudden become effective. So your Mon Mothma, who you only really are using for card draw, can all of a sudden turn around and go, well, hey, I'm just going to sacrifice myself. And then next thing you know, IG 88 is coming or IG 11 is coming at you and your your Sentinel's gone. So I don't know. I think it's an I think it's an interesting build space. I also say that this one is going to be uh, I'm glad it's an uncommon because if this was a rare, this would be a twenty dollar rare uh, when it comes out. So, oh, yeah, thank God sure. it's not. All right, Alex, what's the next one we have? What's the next spoiler we got? We have Follower of the Way, which is a just mono blue, two costing, one three. Coming in at common and the Mandalorian keyword. It is while this unit is upgraded, it gets plus one, plus one. Uh, you know, that's pretty solid because uh, uh, presumably there's going to be a lot of upgrades in this uh, set just because there's a lot of references to it. Um, and also experience and shield tokens are upgrades. So if you give him an experience token, now he's like a 3-5. <laughs> yep. Which is pretty solid for a 2-drop. And yeah. just yeah. being mono blue, you know, it, it can fit in decks. You know, unfortunately, Tarkin's like an Imperial unit. But there, there's other way of giving uh, experience tokens. You have like the Vanguard infantry. Right when that dies, you can give an experience token. Or, you know, it is blue. Maybe you just put it, uh, the shield card on him. The uh, moment of peace. Yeah. Or Luke. Luke, do you just give a no. shield? Oh, no, he oh, can't because he's not, not Rebel. Yeah. Yep. So never mind. Yeah. So I yeah, think... I'm kind of, I was going to say, ahead. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they have like a Darksaber uh, upgrade that comes up of it just for theme uh, to you to give it even more, um, more of a buff. Yeah. What I'm hoping for is if, if we get a Darksaber, it, it would say whoever defeats the unit that has a dark saber gets that dark saber and then takes a penalty for it or something like that. That would be amazing. Like, which would just cause complete chaos. And I love it. That would be like, that would be my favorite thing. I think the card's okay. Um, it's a common. So, uh, the reason it's not super insane is because it's a common and we're going to have a million, we're going to see a million of these. So in draft, it's a one, three for two, which isn't the worst either, you know? Yeah. No, it's not. It's, in fairness, it's not bad. It does, in you know, it does work with other like other things, and I, I think that we could see it. I think we could see it be just kind of a common staple if you need a two drop, and you want to go neutral. It, it's an easy, you know, it's an easy fit into a deck. The next one we have is a villain blue Pike Sentinel. They're part of our syndicate. If you didn't know, this is a Sentinel <laughs> unit, a two three. Um, so now I have, now we have villain Sentinel at two cost. Great. Um, with three health. Terrifying, honestly. <laughs> yep. And this is a common. So again, it's going to be something you can easily pull and easily get. I, again, I'm not like opposed to this, but this feel like talk about your, you know, like this is a great grand inquisitor <laughs> for a blue yeah. grand inquisitor. This is a great card because I can ping this this guy. He could do his damage and he's still Sentinel. And the only thing that he really cares about is big overwhelm. So this this actually gives me options in my blue green inquisitor deck as a two drop. So I like it. I think it's not broken, but I think it's very aggressive. <laughs> it's a very aggressive card. I think it's a terrifying first turn play for Krennic or Aiden, especially Krennic, right? Because it's a Sentinel, so you better do three damage to it or else now it has three attack. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of Iden control going around too. And the last thing I didn't control needs more of is Sentinels. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, but that's an incredibly strong card for, uh, for a common. I think I, the Sentinels are so good in this game and people don't play Zapatour for some reason. So, uh, it just makes it more effective. In my red Sabine deck that I have, I have a, enough Sab a lot of saboteur in it on purpose because <laughs> it's like it's people when people like to play when people hate aggro they put Sentinel in and that's what can bog an aggro deck down. Um, yeah, 
I don't know. I like this card. Um, I'm not super excited uh, for it personally because I don't play a lot of blue right now. Um, so I'm not looking forward to sitting across the table from it. But Alex, what is the next one? We have a doctor coming up, and it's not Dr. Afra, so don't get too excited, folks. But yeah. it is a doctor. Dr. Afra will be coming eventually. Yeah. So is this Dr. Evazan? Mm-hmm. It's that dude that got his arm cut off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he doesn't like you. Hey, he yeah. still has two arms in this one, though. So, oh, this is right before. Uh, yeah, so he's a uh, yellow black for two. He's a three three with shielded. <laughs> but yep. but his bounty is um, when he's uh, defeated or captured. The captured is also important. Um, you your opponent readies up to twelve resources. Uh, because he's wanted on 12 systems. And they like me. That's, that's insane. It is worth noting you can't ready more resources than you already have, obviously. But um, just a 3-3 three, three shielded 2-drop is insane. Like, that's, it's a that's shielded 3-3. So three, three. Yeah. yeah. For two costs. This could come out turn one. Yeah, that, that's that's not what I want to see. <laughs> is this? I don't care if I get to ready some resources. I mean, it's nice Like if you kill them, if you do... Uh, I don't know, you're like late game and you know, super laser blast them and then you get to actually have a full turn after playing super laser blast. That's probably your best case scenario for it. But, uh, ugh. like you can just run them into stuff and then when your opponent takes their initiative, you can just run them in for the kill and cool, they ready their resources. They can't play anyways. Yeah. Like, so I it's, think it's disgusting early game. This is really good. Now, I think the capture, I think this is where the discussion has to come in. Right, Alex, because this is this actually puts a different mecha- mechanic into the game, right? Because we're getting this captured. So when they capture them, do you know what capture actually does? Well, uh, according to the Mandalorian's rifle card, which is the next card we're going to go oh. over. <laughs> um, uh, you put a captured card face down under uh, whatever unit captures it. Um, until that unit leaves play. Presumably, I guess you get the card back, maybe? I don't know. I would assume so. Yeah, I would think so. Um, unless, obviously, it's IG-11, and it just blows up. But yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how much capture mechanics come into play, because if there's a lot of capture, he his stock goes way down. Yeah, and, and, that's, and the reason I say that is because depending on what capture does, right... Like, depending on what it specifically does will depend on what you're going to use for it, right? Because if somebody could take this from you, you, you're, I mean, because this is a, this is a great card to be able to traitorous. You play this, if it lives till I get five resources, I'm just going to take this stupid thing from you. And, and like, it's going to be, this thing is going to be harder to kill. I mean, this is, you're going to have to shoot into this thing twice, at least. It is also, if you're really funny, force lightning is any unit. <laughs> you can force lightning them before your opponent kills them, and then they don't get the 12 resources. It's yeah. not good, but it is comical. Yeah. I, um, I wonder if you can... Oh, no. The cost doesn't let it. Oh yeah, no, never mind. Uh, I, I was just wondering, like, for if somehow you're able to um, have a capture mechanic on a on a like a lower costed unit, and then traitorous that that particular unit from your enemy if they <laughs> capture you, does it your unit still stay captured if you traitorous a a bounty hunter that has a bounty like? I'm sure we'll find out what the rules <laughs> rules <laughs> happen. Yeah, because. That's where the question is, is, does that does that unit come to your side of the board or not? Like, that's the big thing, because if like they get your 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 unit. That's going to be this is like, are you going to really want to play it right? Like if they're not playing if this become how about this? This becomes a lot less scary if capture mechanics are a little bit more prominent and can be played in a lot more uh, decks because you don't want to lose that specific character to somebody else, you know? Yeah, there's like a four cost like capture a, a card kind of a event or something. He's a lot less good. 
because yeah. you just full refund whatever you played that turn to capture him. Exactly. He's also interesting in a, a Grand Inquisitor deck, too. Because you do get two swings out of him with Grand Inquisitor's ability. Yeah, and generally, naturally. if you're doing that, yeah, generally, if you're doing that, too, you're later on in the initiative, so your opponent's more likely to take the initiative, so them readying some resources uh, matters less. Yeah. All right, why don't we move on to some of the older spoilers? Um, I think I want to go through a few of these, at least, if not. I mean, we'll, we'll let's get through as many as we can. I, I, these, I know these have been out for a little while, but I, our podcast had not um, started at the time these were coming out, so... I really wanted to um, kind of go through a few of them um, and just talk a little bit about them. So I think the big one, you know, obviously is this Razor Crest here. But let's start with that Mandalorian rifle. JJ, what is this Mandalorian rifle? Uh, so this is an item that can be equipped. Uh, it comes three costs, and it reads: Attach your friendly non-vehicle unit when played. If this is attached, uh, if the attached unit is the Mandalorian, he captures an exhausted an enemy non-leader unit. Uh, meaning you put that capture card face down under him until he leaves play. Uh, this provides the unit with a plus three attack bonus uh, for that particular one there. Um, I I want to say this is an auto include for the Mandalorian himself because that's pretty strong. Um, capturing a non-enemy leader unit, especially late game, um, if you got like a really big um, like Blizzard ATT that uh, ATAT that comes out um, or like Pow, for instance. Uh, being able to capture that unit uh, when they come out by playing this on the Mandalorian can be very, very good. Um, and it, it could help you win the game, I would say. Uh, so definitely, uh, I think it's a very strong card to to play on the Mandalorian should he comes out. Now, unless if you're only having one in one, the chances of having both of them in the same uh, in the same hand can be a bit tricky unless you have some mechanics to help you draw cards uh, so that we can make sure you can uh, get this out when you do end up playing the Mandalorian. Um, but beyond that, it could be pretty good. All right. So the way capture works, so I guess I, I looked it up. So let's just go back to the capture piece. The way it works is when you capture somebody, they have to be exhausted, right? They get fate turned up face down underneath your card. So if the Mandalorian captures, let's say, uh, uh, the fa that the guy, the Doctor Z Zavon or whatever the hell his name is, from above, he loses any upgrades that he has, so he does lose his shield. He comes underneath your card, you, and then he stays there until the Mandalorian dies, right? So when the Mandalorian's dead or removed from play, whichever way. So like if you waylay the Mandalorian, that guy then goes back to the owner, exhausted. So it doesn't actually even go into your discard pile. So when we go back up to this guy, if you think about it, you capture him. He can be captured multiple times. So let's say you need ready resources and you want to sacrifice maybe, I don't know, an IG 11 unit or something like that. You can then go back and capture him and re-ready your resources. It's just stupid. Um, so the stocks, in my opinion, stocks are a little bit down in this guy. I'll collect a few of these guys, but um, I, I think stocks have gone there. The capture mechanics might just be too good for uh, letting that guy go. So, yeah, it's worth noting that the Mandalorian's rifle it works with both like the leader and Yuna Mandalorian, so yes. it's kind of like loose lightsaber. Um, where it's like, well, this is really good with one particular guy, but if you're running like a blue yellow Mandalorian deck where you have four of them, the, the rifle's a lot better. When you're just, if you're not running a blue uh, deck, you don't get the Mandalorian unit without paying a lot. And that just seems less good. Yeah. But it does turn the leader into a seven, seven and that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, e exactly. And like, you have to be able to get rid of that thing right away. So, all right, the next we have is the Razor Crest Transport. It has Restore 2 on it. When played, you may return an upgrade from your discard pile to your hand. So, JJ, a second ago, you just said, hey, wouldn't it be great if I had the Mandalorian rifle and, <laughs> and the Mandalorian in my hand at the same time? Well, guess what? The Razor Crest, Crest lets you do some of those things. Yeah. So you can use the Mandalorian rifle, play it on whatever the hell you want, let them get defeated, and then just dig it out of your graveyard you just here you go it comes back 
It would have to be the Mandalorian mm. again in order for that to come out and like work the way it's supposed to. But if you have multiple copies of him, yeah, that's great. Or you can use the Mandalorian rifle on anybody and it just goes in your discard pile. And then when you get to your six resources, it gives you the ability yeah. to get out of your. That's true. Your yeah, that's pile. true. Pretty strong. Yeah, I think the Razor Crest is pretty solid. Uh, you know, three, four for four with Restore Two is pretty, pretty decent. Yeah, it's not uh, lighting anything up, but that Restore helps out a lot. Yep, and it, it has enough health that it's telling you you have to it, like you have to do four damage to it to kill it. So, you, and it's you, a Mandalorian guard too, so like you can dig search for, for it. a couple. Yeah, which is which is nice. Yeah, too bad it's garbage in X Wing. I know, I know. Like, it would be so nice if we have, if we had had like a better one for it, you know. I know, right? Where's Q nine, man? I want to see. We might get Q nine. I would love if we got Q nine card the set. <laughs> so speaking of the Mandalorian, the next one um, is the legendary card, the Mandalorian. He's a five six for six with Sentinel. Uh, blue white and then when he's played you can heal all damage from you know that cost two or less and give two shield tokens to it <laughs> like Grogru, which we'll go over later <laughs> um but yeah that's i mean a, a five six sentinel is very frustrating uh to deal with and then like also if you have like Grogru or um Really, any other like decent two cost just to fully heal it and give it two shield tokens is pretty nice. And then you could put the rifle on him, capture a card, and now he's an eight six sentinel, and that's even more devastating. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me swing into your sentinel. Oh, I take eight damage back and die. Thanks. Yeah, but it's a, yeah, and, and it, being a six drop, it does go before things like Vader, right? Uh, and then they would have to ambush into the Mandalorian. Better hope you draw Veers in your deck or something with him because you're not killing him, then he's just going to auto kill you back. Yeah, and imagine playing this in the Luke deck, right? You know, where you're constantly giving the Mandalorian a shield. Um, oh, God luck, man. Good luck getting rid of this card, man. It, it's going to be really tough. Well, that's why Waylay just became a little bit better of a card, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Waylay is a lot better because when you Waylay, you don't get to put the stupid freaking upgrades. Now, I won't lie and say if you can afford this stupid thing, <laughs> can you imagine Waylaying it and then giving two shields to Grogu and then the next turn they play it again and they give two more shields to Grogu? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. I mean another card calculated lethality might help with that but still that's that's a pain <laughs> yeah i think i think for a legendary this is actually pretty good so mace right now is a seven cost mace has ambush this is not this has sentinel mace also has the ability to re-ready himself and mace is what a five seven or is mm -hmm. it a six seven it's a five remember. seven and then just this, the Mandalorian just stops him in his tracks. Unless you have like red three or yeah. something to, to buff him. Yep. So I would almost say that like, so Mace right now is going for roughly 15 to $18. I would almost say this Mandalorian is going to be worth more than that. I almost feel that this Mandalorian is going to hit the 30, $30 digits. Um, Cause it's going to have a high you and you can dig for the stupid thing too. That's, that's the other issue. Yeah. You can dig for this thing. So, which is a, like they there is one more mechanic they have not told us about that's coming in the set, and now I want to know what the hell that mechanic is. But <clears throat> digging for cards has become more beneficial, in my opinion, than originally I thought it was. Like originally, like especially coming from Destiny, like I didn't like it, like digging for cards as much. This them giving us all these stupid cards that can dig now is a little scary. Um, cause it makes you a little bit more accurate than you, you were in destiny. So, um, anyway, let's move on to the phase three dark trooper, which by the way, I love the art on this. And if you guys get a, um, anybody here gets a, one of these guys, 
in hyperspace, let me know. I will probably buy like three of these fucking hyperspace thing. Now, go ahead. Um, it's a starter pack card, so yes. so it's it probably gonna, like OP. Probably it's gonna right? probably be OP. Yep, which I'm excited about. So I'm just saying though, still, if you get three of these through OP, like I've gotten five. I've I've played for almost eight weeks now, and I've gotten five effing Darth Vader lightsabers. By the way, I don't I don't even like I don't, like it's cool looking, but I don't care about it. Like, but anyway, these ones same with like I have Gideon Task or not Gideon Task. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> you have Gideon's tasks. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Anyway, I have Tarkin, the Tarkin one unit. Um. I don't know. I have these other ones. I just don't care about them. They don't look as cool. This, I bet you, is going to look insanely good because it's going to have that red inside of that hyperspace. Um, so, yeah. So, people throw these uh, promos at me. And I'm excited about this unit because it's a Sentinel and it's a, another green Sentinel that I just absolutely love. I, I am a little sad. Rest in peace are 15 minute games. Uh, we're not going to have 15 minute games anymore with all this damn Sentinel here. But this unit, when combat damage is dealt to this unit, give an experience token to it if it survives the damage. Thank God they said that. Because could you imagine if they hadn't clarified that and then somebody all of a sudden goes to kill it and does three damage to it and somebody's like, oh, I get to put an experience token and now it's a four. Like, no. Um, I love the concept behind this, though, because it says you have to kill this. And I think that I think you can easily kill a three three, right? Like I don't think that that's really that hard to kill. Like I mean, we have cell block guards that die all the time. This is not end of the world, but it does make you think of your sequencing. So it forces you to choose sequencing for this specific via or this specific unit ahead of time. And by the way, it's an Imperial trooper, so Veers loves this unit. Um, yeah, it's. Um... It, well, one, it's a straight replacement for cell block guards if you're not going to run both uh, and you have green. But, man, it punishes like uh, like Mon Mothma, right? And like R2-D2, anything with one attacks or Grogu, I guess. Well, he has to be dealt combat, combat damage, so never mind. But like, uh, yeah, anything with one attack, you could just start swinging that guy into him and just start raking up all the uh, experience tokens. Um, and he is a trooper. So if you're building trooper decks, like with Tarkin or something, that's really silly. And then Tarkin could also just give it an, imp- uh, uh, an experience yeah. just off rip. <laughs> yep. It uh, could end so up with two. You, and now you're just growing your Sentinel. Yeah. And Tarkin can do it every turn. So that's, that's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. I think this actually lends the Tarkin deck the most so far. Like, I think this one really, really, really lends that Tarkin deck. Um, and this is, it's a special card. So it's going to come in the starter pack. Um, so at least everybody's going to get three of these. So thank God um, that this, like, this is not going to be a chase card um, at all. Cause could you imagine if this was a rare, like fucking Emperor Palpatine's guard? Oh, oh gosh, no. All right. Let's move on to that. I do like this one, but let's move on to the next one. We have the cutest thing in Star Wars to ever exist. And I don't know why he's not eating frogs. JJ, what the f- what is what is this unit? Uh, this unit is an auto include for Thrawn decks. Uh, we got <laughs> the two <laughs> boss, Grogu, uh, with the zero attack and five health. Uh, and his ability is action, uh, exhaust an enemy unit. Uh, I mean, he's very cheap to place on the board. Um, and she exists to help you exhaust any enemy unit. It could be a leader unit. It could be a really strong uh, attacker that comes in that's like filled up to the brim. Uh, Grogu is so good for his cost. Um, he doesn't have to attack. He's just there to make everybody else's life miserable. Uh, combine that with the Thrawn deck that helps you um, exhaust the units. You can really, really control the board with this unit. And you bet your ass that people are going to go in and attack that poor little Grogu <laughs> for her because of that ability there. Um, so I think it's it's uh, it definitely has its uses there, mainly in Thrawn decks. Um, but yeah, so hold, this hold is, on. Yeah. Are you going to pay four for it in a Thrawn deck? Um, deck. Yeah. Why not? Okay. I don't see why not. I would. Mm, that's, that's spicy, JJ. That's a spicy take there. We got spicy JJ on the stream here. Hell yeah, Ren. 
I don't know. I guess I don't a hundred percent disagree either. Like for for a four cost for giving something to Thrawn, it's a little high. It's a little over the curve, in my opinion, just to exhaust the unit, um, in a villain deck. But I guess if there's other cards that can benefit him, maybe maybe. Um, I think, I think the five health is disgusting though for a two cost unit because I can't next turn I can't open fire this stupid thing. You can yeah. force choke it though, as God intended. Thank God. All right. <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm 100% force choking the hell out of this stupid thing. Can you imagine Luke being able to play this stupid thing down and give a shield to it so you can't even? Oh do my his, gosh! You can't mm-hmm. even do a force choke to the stupid thing. Ugh. Yeah, I mean is it, it is also a force unit itself. I know. So you get all the benefits of having things with force. Uh, like, yeah, just you know, give it all saber. things. <laughs> Oh, we could do with that too, yeah. But it, it works with Jedi lightsaber, right? Mm-hmm. It gets a plus three, plus three, and if you start swinging with it, if you wanted to, they get minus two, minus two, and you're you could, you're a three eight. Yeah, you, you, five off for two for yeah for five. You can also use it. Um, the other thing that I think is good for too is like in inside of the the Luke deck, you get you can give that shield to Grogu here, right? Each you know like that first churn, and then. Grogu is now a shielded unit. You're going to have to get rid of some of these other like things. Like, you're going to have to play something to get rid of this shield token on this thing because by, you know, the second turn, are you going to be able to take out a shielded five health unit? I don't, I don't, I don't think so, but I mean, it's just nice that it has zero attacks. So you don't take anything in return for swinging at this. Yeah. What's the card? Um, the forces, is it the forces with me? Yeah, the the four cost card like that's really good with this unit too because you can heal your damage, then give it shields, and then a, a, attack with it. Like you're not going if you to want. A, the yeah, attack is a may so like. exactly <laughs> like so you don't even have to attack. That's what I'm saying. Like you, who cares? Like you're not going to attack with a zero damage unit, but you're sure as heck going to give that thing two shields, and you're sure as heck going to heal the hell out of that. You know, or no, it's experience cards. You're going to give it experience cards, and then you're going to heal its damage like and you could do this with four resources right so like i don't know you know it's gonna be fun putting him and yoda on the board at the same time that's gonna be fun oh yeah heck yeah yeah you know i'm just gonna run triple power failure in my deck now <laughs> if, if these things get out of control <laughs> it's just like no stack, stack everything on it i don't care it's all gonna die yeah yeah, and uh, I'm going to run the regional governor and claim and say power failure. So you have to kill my regional governor. <laughs> That's fine. It's a one four. I can do it. But no, just the the exhaust and enemy unit is is the huge part because it could just do it the leaders like JJ was saying, and it's just like you have one turn when you deploy your leader to just exhaust it with Rogu, mm-hmm. and that ruins a lot of things. Think about a traitorous. Traitorous now takes Grogu and puts him on your side of the board too, like that, which is hilarious, right? Because oh, man, we're gonna have like traitorous wars over Grogu. That's what's gonna happen. If you give it just one experience token, you can't use takedown on it because that mm-hmm. has too much health, yep. and that's scary. Yep. You have to use vanquish. Like now you're into right. the vanquish mode. And you're you're vanquishing your opponent's two costing card for your five. Yeah, disgusting. I'll I will tell you right now. I think that that card is on the verge of broken. Thank God you can't use it in draft or sealed because it is a starter back card. True. So you don't have to see it on like weekly locals like that. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Gideon's light. Cruiser, I actually like the artwork on this one too, quite a bit. Yeah, um, it's gonna be a cool hyperspace card. Yeah, JJ, what what is this card? So we got a uh, black aspect uh, Gideon's Light Cruiser for eight costs. It comes in at seven attack, eight health. Uh, comes with overwhelms, and the ability reads: When played, if you control Moff Gideon as a leader or a unit, you may play a black aspect unit that costs three or less from your hand or discard pile for free. 
uh, definitely really cool. Uh, you're able to get quite a few uh, good uh, Black Aspect cards um, that are good at that cost. Um, or even if you're looking at a four or five um, for, you know, that discount is pretty good. Um, it's uh, it's definitely something they probably have to ramp up to because it is eight cost. Um, so it's not something you're not going to get out immediately. Late game um, for what it can do, it can be pretty strong there, um, especially with the uh, with Gideon's uh, ability on there. I think this is a solid ship to include in that deck. Uh, I would probably also consider having this in a in a pout deck as well, um, as long as I had Moth Gideon as a as a unit card. Yeah. So there's spoiler right there. We know we're getting a moth unit, <laughs> moth Gideon yeah. unit card. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes they'll refer to that as a leader, a unit, and we didn't get it yet. We're we're yeah. getting it at some point. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure we are. But okay, thank you. Like that, there's you're... a couple cards that refer to like as a unit or leader, and there's no like unit version of them or whatever. Yeah, but it's coming. This is 100 percent coming. This is the way. This is the way. So all right, the best part about this card. You could, you could, it, okay. So you're right. In a Pelp deck, you could then pull out Palpatine Emperor Palpatine's Royal Guard. <laughs> this stupid thing. And just play it. It's like a Vader for eight. And oh, or a Veers. Think about it. Oh, I'm just gonna di- I'm gonna pull out a Veers, and now the stupid thing is an eight nine. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. This seems for eight costs. This seems pretty good. I will just, I won't lie and tell you that this seems really, really, really good for eight costs. And this. As an FYI, folks, this is going to be like a future segment. We are going to discuss like we're going to break down like beginning game, mid game, end game and like talk about different styles. One of the things I'm very cautious about right now is trying to define, you know, what do we have? Like traditionally you have your pillars, right? Your deck pillars. And now people some people are trying to define them as like a wider branch. And I'm saying is, oh, but hold on before we do that, I really we're going to be talking about mid game you know, early game and end game, because what it feels like in, in star Wars unlimited is the, the end game that we get actually is extremely more important than your mid game or even maybe your beginning, you know, your beginning phase. And I say this because, because of the fact that everybody, once you hit these eight resources, unless you're this big ramp deck, right? Once you hit that, you have to figure out how you're going to play every little piece because, for example, yeah, Super Laser Blast could come down at the same turn this can. So, yeah, you play this and you pull out a a Veers and somebody plays here. Here you go. Here's a Super Laser Blast. Have have a nice time. You know, so that's going to be a future discussion just as an FYI. I like this card a lot. I also like that it lets you play out of your hand Mm -hmm. and not just your strictly your discard pile. Um, just because, you know, sometimes you just don't have that three costing card in your discard pile. Like you, you held on, like you never had an opportunity to play like Veers or, uh, maybe you had an extra one because he's unique uh, and then he died later on or something, or, uh, you know, there wasn't not a, a good time to play a certain card or like a Viper pro droid, right? Like it's not necessary that you need to play it in the end game but you can play it for free from that uh i I really like this card honestly the the overwhelm is really good on that for a a, a seven attack eight health yeah i i love this card this card is my favorite card so far so all right we got two left for the ones and then we are going to be caught up as a podcast the last one or not the last one. The second to last one is Wanted. It is a bounty condition. So condition is a new a new uh, uh, keyword that we were seeing, right? It's called Attach Unit Gains Bounty. Ready to friendly resources. When this unit is defeated or captured, its opponent collects its bounty. Now, let me explain to you why I'm more excited about some of this stuff than like maybe other people are. And like this card isn't like, Oh my God, super insane. Other than the fact that it's a zero cost, right? It's a zero cost bounty in destiny. The last bloody set we got, we got bounties in damn it. And we got these bounties. We got no good to be dead. By the way, it's a bounty, not a card in any way. Like, and then they killed the game and I didn't get to use like any of these bounties for any (laughs) joy, but now I'm getting this, this stupid zero cost bounty, right? 
like this can be played anytime. Attached unit, you can ready to resources. This is a yellow neutral card, so you can literally, uh, literally play this in anything. And the best part is, is you don't have to have a bounty hunter to actually play this. This is not like a condition um, that you have to play for, um, you know, with a specific style of play. Now, I think that would be interesting, personally, if they had said only bounties can be played specifically without a c- extra cost by a bounty character. But that's fine. We'll just move on from there. Because to me, that's a design uh, miss that that would have been amazing um, and would have created like insane complexity if if they had ever been able to do that. But this card, this card at zero cost just lets you ready to resources. Um, I'll be honest, like in an early game, like sub, it's, it's going to work better in specific decks. So like a Han kind of likes this card um, because Han's adding resources into his hand once he comes out, you know, from his deck, you can use this to ready and be able to play higher level, higher cost things a little bit more. Um, I don't know if I would put this in a Boba deck right now, though, right? Because you're already ready in all your resources and you don't have enough card draw. So, um, well, but right. same thing with Han, you don't have enough card draw to like sustain it, but it, well, it it's recruits like... for it, damn it. <laughs> 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 it's uh it, it's a pretty interesting card. We'll see um how yeah good it is with like what what kind of uh, efficiency builds you can build around it. Uh just cuz readying two resources is okay. But generally, I don't know. I don't know. Do you have like a lot of see- I, I kind of have a different um, I kind of have a different take on it, right? Because I think this is a card that you play um, if you're intending to go second, right? Um, you know that your your opponent is most likely going to get initiative, um, so you're just waiting for that that person to pass so that we can play out this card. And if you know that you can take out that unit that particular turn, it can really help you set up a another play after that, right? Um, so you play it on an enemy that's already wounded, or you know that you're going to able be able to get killed. Your opponent can't react to it because they've already claimed the initiative and passed, and you're able to um, take advantage of you know uh, k- getting that bounty, readying up to resources, and then possibly if you already had more resources lined up for it, then you can play another card, or you can uh, play a very cheap you know two cost unit from your hand on there and have you ready for the next turn and then just pass onto the next turn so it can help you set up for a better turn um for the following round and i think that's the strength of that particular card yeah i mean it's definitely i mean you can combo off if you like play it first and then they do something and then you attack again and play another card but it seems like something that you kind of want to per- uh, just kind of keep between turns maybe i'm not exactly sure i we'd have to know more about the set to see how uh, useful this card is yeah fair enough all right alex what is the last card calculated lethality yes it's a uh four yeah. cost blue black hold on i gotta ask you do you like the card name yeah i think it's awesome all right because you know it's a play on words that you hate when I do. You just like it when somebody else does. So I'm, I'm going to call you out there a little bit. That's all. It gives me four calculate tokens. What could be bad about it? <laughs> all right, go on. Uh, yeah, so it's a four costing blue black event. It's a tactic, unfortunately. You don't get a trick with Java. But uh, it is defeat a non leader unit that costs three or less, just straight up. And then for each upgrade that was on that unit, you can give an experience token to a friendly unit. And a friendly unit includes your leaders too, which is very, very scary. Uh, So this is a good kind of control card if a lot of upgrades start appearing. But also you just straight up defeat a unit that costs three or less. uh, Which can be pretty um, important for things against like echo-based defenders, for instance. Uh, Just I mean, it's a four cost, so it's a little bit, a little bit steep. Gro- Want to try Grogu. to play it on things, but yes, if you have Grogu, maybe they played the Mandalorian, um, Dark the, the unit before that, so now it's got you know two shields, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's very nice uh, counter to that, and it is a starter pack exclusive card, worth yeah. of note. So you're not going to get it in like draft and sealed. 
Thank God. I like this card too, though. I agree with you. This card just made control so much better. And I'm happy that we're getting like a card that will counter what the set is designed to do. Right. So the set goes here. Let me give you a bunch of upgrades, but I'm also going to give you cards. So if we're getting this, the chances are we're getting other cards to control upgrades. That that's that would be my theory. And it kills Boba Fett unit straight up too. Mm -hmm. FYI, mm. guys. <laughs> The art that's on it, is that the Dark Trooper from Mando Season 2? Uh, it's a Dark Trooper. Yes, I, I think. think I think you're right, yes. Also, this hyperspace card is going to look amazing. Just, 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 just in case people get these and want to be like, here, Tanner, uh, I would like <laughs> happily give you some extra hyperspace cards. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Can can we go back to the wanted card for a second? Yeah. That guy looks like he's doing this. He's like, oh. <laughs> it's like the opposite of Pelp. Pelp's like, ah. He's like, oh. Right, I'm sorry. I think he's just shocked that he's wanted for something. <laughs> yeah. It's like, who wants me? <laughs> I look like a fucking mummy. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Sorry. <laughs> have to edit that out. Um. Anyway, so. Those are the spoilers. Again, I agree with you, though. Like some of that starter pack stuff like is better than that first starter pack we got. Like the first starter pack we got was not horrible. But man, this one like this one's got like this one's got some bangers in it, man. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. This set looks really cool. I can't yeah, wait I'm... until everything's revealed. Did we, this... we, didn't, we didn't go through the two leaders, did we? Yeah, we'll do it some other No, time. we're about to, though. Yeah, yeah. No. But I was going to say, like, this this pack feels like it's going to get sold out day one, honestly. Well, at least it's the starter, right? Like, everyone should have the starter. Yeah. yeah. They made it. I don't think, I'll say, I don't think they made, had an issue getting starters. Like, we're still, my local is still able to order starters. So, like, I don't think it's a big thing. You know, and I will say, I wanted to buy one for my brother for his graduation gift, but um, we were sold out. But supposedly we got more coming in this week. So well, my store still has like three or four of them, and it's been and that's off a reorder, so that's cool. Fair enough. All right, well, let's move on to our next segment. We have our for a cause I believe in segment, folks, and we are going to be having a discussion about Luke as a green deck all right for a cause i believe in is a basically that's kind of our more casual discussion points where if you would like to submit a list you're welcome to we will happily um go through and talk about your list and give you some pointers on what we feel would make it better um, if you do submit a list, make sure you 100% tell us like, hey, this is kind of what I'm trying to do with the list or A, I, or B, like I don't own a bunch of stuff. Just that way we can make sure we accommodate that because, you know, for somebody that, you know, like for those of us that are playing online and stuff like that, like we don't think I always think about that. But I do know that that is a factor, especially not being able to get um, all of the uh, all of the, the cards right now. So I just want to make sure that if you are going to submit a, a deck that you want us to talk about or tweak or give opinions on great. Let's do it. I'm love those things. And um, what we're going to do uh, is, is just make sure you tell us kind of your situation so that we can accommodate that. But tonight for our four cost segment, Alex had a great idea where he said, Hey, what if we each built a deck, each of us just built a deck and said, Hey, we're going to build a deck and um, we're going to see what the difference is between the three of them. And, and talk about it, right? And a lot the idea behind it is hey, we have different list building styles. Um, usually Alex likes to point out our flaws. So um, this is a great opportunity for him to kind of like show his um appreciation for how much he doesn't like JJ or Tanner's build. Um <laughs> but it also kind of talks about like there is a difference in deck design, right? And like I think like in the like in a card game, and this is when I came, when I went to X Wing, and again, if you didn't know, we have an X Wing podcast, by the way, folks. So if you, you should listen to our other podcasts that we have as well, where we have an X Wing podcast. But one of the big things that we talk about on our X Wing podcast is like list building versus um, just playing the game, and that's very true in a TCG as well. List building is a big thing, 
and then playing the game is the second thing. The difference is, is in a TCG, list building feels a little bit more open. It allows us to, to be a little bit more creative um, in our ability to do things, right? Um, and the execution style is just a little bit different than, uh, again, uh, the again, for example, in a miniature style game, right? So tonight we decided is Alex said, hey, Chris, can we look at Luke Green and what would be your preferred build? And JJ, what is your preferred build? And let's let's kind of go through all three. All three different builds. So tonight mine is Luke gets to smoke some greens because I like playful titles and um, we're going to find out Alex is not, by the way, because you're a um, child. I am not a child. <laughs> I love playful titles and it helps me figure out when I have like 20 decks in my, my unlimited database. I helps me figure out which one I go. Oh, I want to play this one because this is the one I gave a cutesy name to. So I like this one better than the one I just named. Um, just Morga for it's, I don't know, or some stupid thing like that, whatever you called your, <laughs> um so this one i went with a little bit more of an aggressive luke build um i am using ecl so i i won't lie and say that that's not always going to be the cause and I, I am open um to to discussing whether ecl is even right for luke um a 25 health base is a little bit dodgy but the idea is is giving you the reason i threw the ecl in there to begin with is it gives you a little bit more of that ambush option um, with a few of your char your lower level characters that you can throw out there, right? Um, I also have a very spicy card in here that is an off color card, um, and no one else is going to like this but Tanner. But Tanner loves this, and this is one of my favorite cards in the whole set. And this is the part of the mill player that that is in me. Now, um, I have so I have three alliance dispatchers, I have two R two D twos, two um, Arc one seventies, three of the Luke's lightsaber. Two regional governors, three of the, I don't remember how to say Battlefield that. Battlefield Marines. Thank you. Battlefield Marine. Two Spark of the Rebellions, two Yodas, two Make an Opening, three Echo Base Defenders, three Resupply. And the Resupply, I'm always 50 50 on. I don't like love that card. Um, but for Ramp, that's the closest card you get to Ramp. Um, I also have three Fleet Lieutenants, three Canons. Two takedowns, three bright hopes, two traitorous, two obies, three lukes, three U wings, and two redemptions. So I don't have a million high cost units in this deck at all. Um, and we could talk about the sideboard, right? In a minute, if we would like to. I don't know. I don't know, Alex. Are we going to talk about sideboards? Is it worth talking about sideboards? Yeah, you might as well just mention it briefly. Okay. My sideboard has has some alternate stuff in it, so it has two of the recruits. Um, two, and I can't remember the name of the car, two entrenched, two of the uh, Star Vipers, two Blaze, one more takedown in case you really need it, and one more redemption in case you need it. So the idea with this deck is is to be controlish, right? And so the Spark of the Rebellion automatically is a four-cost card. Now, what I will tell you is you don't play Spark of the Rebellion on the turn you have four resources. That's not when you play that. The Spark of the Rebellion is played during when you're going to deploy Luke or during when you're in the later phase when you actually want to stop your opponent from using a like a, a super laser blast is not correct, but like a uh, overwhelming barrage or something like that to start killing off your units. Because overwhelming barrage does not care about Sentinel at all. It only cares about what you have on the board. So you're using Spark of the Rebellion in key places to go after and take down specific units. Same with regional governor. You do not really want to see regional governor in your opening hand. You do not mulligan for the regional governor. Regional governor is like a mid game play. And the idea behind it is you're using that in spark of the rebellion towards your mid game to kind of say, I want to start denying my opponent. Um, the ability to do, specific things so depending on what deck you're playing against is when you would use that regional governor or the spark of the rebellion spark of the rebellion is just so good because you get to see what they have and then throw a card away like you just get to throw a card away and i won't lie and tell you how many times i've had somebody where i'm 
playing a Pelp Red deck and somebody uses that stupid card and gets rid of my Force Choke, and then I'm a little pissed off I can't take out their, you know, Grogu again. <laughs> I, I didn't throw... Not really Grogu, but I didn't throw any um, <laughs> set two cards in here specifically because I didn't know if we were going to talk about that or not. Um, I do have a lower Sentinel piece right now, um, but the idea is, is Luke can give shields to a lot of these units. Um, so you have the ability to give shields to, and the Alliance Dispatcher allows you to play everything at one uh, unit, one cost cheaper. So you could play your Alliance Dispatcher round one, give it a shield, and a lot of times people are kind of like, eh, do I really go after that? Um, you should go after it, but not everybody goes after that. Because oh, then, I have first turned Force Choked an Alliance Dispatcher. Yeah. Well, you can if it doesn't have a shield. If it has a shield, well, you can't do that. When he plays it, and then I force choke it, and then he's like, yeah. well, never okay. mind. Then. And I'm like, I'm not dealing with this. No, and that's fair. I'm just saying is that has to be that that is one of the keys to this deck is that I'm able to get things out a little bit cheaper um, for it. And, and you know, it, it does have some restriction because you can't like align it like on turn two, you can't use it to like um, specifically use fleet lieutenant if you don't have any other units on the board, right? Um, I will say, I won't lie and say that I have 100% use that and put R2-D2 as a second one and nobody takes them off the board. And then, you know, when it gets to my turn, I use it, play the fleet lieutenant and ambush with (laughs) (laughs) R2-D2. Like, just to be a a not nice person. Um, (laughs) uh, So, yeah. So, anyway, so long, long story short is the sideboard's a little bit different. The sideboard has the recruits and the entrenched in there for when you're playing against like um, decks you need to start digging for, right? Like I don't, if I don't need to ramp, I can sub out the recruits um, in there and, and put that in there. And so I can start digging for things. Like if I really need that regional governor earlier or anything like, or if I need like a Obi-Wan or a Luke or something um, for it. Well, a lot of what Luke Green does is Luke Green says, hey, I'm not going to allow my opponent to do things because I'm able to give shields to everything. Not everything, right? But a lot of things. And that Alliance Dispatcher gives you the reduction of cost. So the fact that you're able to put a shield onto something easier, right? And so, like, for example, turn two, I can exhaust my Alliance Dispatcher, play a Marine, a Battleful Marine for one cost and have another you know, I could play an R2 and put a shield out um, type thing with loot. So it, it does a lot of cool things. Um, and being able to get Kanan out at a three cost is like, oh my gosh, like so good. Like, and if, or I hold Kanan until I have four resources and putting Kanan out and then putting a shield on him. Pfft, like, thank you, Alliance Dispatcher. You 100% have been worth one cost. That, but the one cost that somebody decided not to kill. Um, traitorous is a questionable in my opinion is more of my questionable upgrade like I have traitorous in there specifically to kind of help deal with um, being able to get to my loot churn so if I if I'm not ramping or I don't want to ramp I have traitorous in there specifically to say hey I, I could steal your sentinel units um, to help me or I can steal your I don't know I could steal your stupid I could steal some of your stupid cards that I disagree with uh, you being able to play, um, such as if you have space units that I'm not able to deal with stuff like that. So, All right, Alex, do we want to move on to yours? Do you have comments on mine or do we want to go through each of the decks and then kind of like come back to Just, all three? Uh, what, what, what like style of deck would you say this is? That, that's my main question, that's all. Uh, this is like a mid range control deck. So it, it, it is controlly in the aspect of I have a little bit of control in there, um, but most of my control is designed to be late game so that I can overwhelm you in the end. So, JJ, do you have any comments? No, I like it a lot. I definitely like the Alliance Dispatcher. I, I included it in my list as well for the same reason that he has it there. But for me, I would actually play it more late game uh, once I've established enough Sentinels out there. Um, so that way, at least for physical attacks, um, it's a little more guarded that way and it helps me get out more uh, Sentinel units out there. Um, I would actually consider putting more of them as my sideboard. Um, so that way I can, you know, just depending on what I'm facing, I can have more of them out there. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's definitely a, the right call, I would say. 
All right, Alex, you're, you're, do you want to give your thoughts or? Um, well, I uh, just, uh, I don't know. Maybe my thoughts will be in my, <laughs> when I go over my deck. Uh, what, why did you choose redemption over home one? I, I like redemption personally better than home run. And maybe it's just because I'm the pelp guy that steals uh, home one all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want my home one stolen because I know what happened. If you steal a home one, you win the game. I think that's just like, I think that's the answer to everything. You just win the game if you steal a home one. Um, the reason I liked the redemption was for the healing aspect for the control piece because of the fact that if I have a Luke out there or my leader Luke, I have the ability to play that redemption and steal that damage onto redemption without a, without killing it and B it gives you a target to say, uh, I'm going to go, I need to go after that, that unit again. Um, so I, I liked that personally, I liked the redemption. I also liked the, the, the Sentinel piece of it a little bit more. It gave me a late game Sentinel, um, to help against some of the Avengers, um, and maybe it's just because I'm seeing Avenger more often, but it does help a little bit against like counter control decks. Fair enough. I mean, your space game is kind of weak, right? You got two arcs and three bright hopes and then two redemptions. So, yes, as long as you're not playing JJ in his space deck, you should be. Oh, that might be okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's why I have the three or the two of the the star the vipers star vipers in there yeah. is if i'm playing something that's space heavy i sub those in immediately they they immediately go in there and what do you plan on ecling uh, i depends on what deck i'm playing it against a oh, lot of time enough. like it, it really depends like if i'm playing against an aggro deck i want to get rid of their units uh, faster so it it's a whole range of things um, I will say Kanan is one of my favorites to ECL, especially if I um, can bring him in and then not lose him to take out a, something, a unit, and then I can give him a shield with Luke. So that's my my preferred play is to um, use my Alliance Dispatcher, right, um, to be able to have like an extra resource that turn that I get the Kanan out. And usually I would, br I, I probably do not bring Kanan out on, on the four resource turn. I usually wait till five resource turns, depending on what they have. Um, so, but, the, but Kanan is a, Kanan, really Kanan is my big one. Um, that, that's, that's, that's usually the one. And I won't lie and say that, you know, like, um, I have ECL'd a echo based defender before against lower cost units. Um, it's not as ideal. <laughs> um, it's definitely not as ideal, but I have 100% done it, especially for something that can't ping him for one. So I could just take out, you know, something that either has a shield I need or um, something that has lower health that I just need to get rid of. <coughs> yeah, I mean, uh, ECLing of Fleet Lieutenant isn't too bad either because, you know, you get double uh, double attack off of that true yep which uh you know it's not too bad um so yeah i can respect that other than the spark of rebellion <laughs> i know <laughs> i know you I just love that card i know i don't care i don't care what you say like i i think that, that card, I th again and i i think this is a discussion we should have at some time off playing off color or off suit right like i guess it's not the correct terminology because it's not really a suit but you know off aspect there you go it, we 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 off aspect is a is a conversation piece. Is there cars worth playing off aspect? So, I think there is. I agree. I just don't think it's Spark of the Rebellion. <laughs> I know you don't. That's okay. All right, let's move on to yours. Let's not spend the whole hour on my. Yeah. Okay, so my Luke deck, Green Luke, is uh, that's the name of it, by the way, Green Luke. As it should be. <laughs> dumb, dumb name. <laughs> uh, so I also have Triple Alliance okay. Dispatcher. You could have said Luke drinks green milk. I mean, like, that would have been a cool deck name. It's like green milk, just expired blue milk. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that, too. Luke drinks expired milk. There you go. Come on, yeah. man. We're renaming this freaking episode right now. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Triple Alliance Dispatcher, uh, because that is just a disgusting turn one play. Uh, double R2-D2, triple Arc, double uh, Luke's Lightsaber, triple It Binds All Things, 
uh, because I have a fairly significant amount of force in here, uh, just pulling damage off and putting it somewhere is really good. Especially because uh, you do it to space units or their sentinels, like an echo based defender. I have a triple battlefield marine, double Mon Mothma, uh, just to pull some uh, rebel cards if I need them, situational. Uh, triple Yoda, triple Cloud uh, City Wingard, because I, I love me some Sentinels. Um, you don't get to put a, a shield on them with Luke, but uh, the more you lock it down, the better it gets with this deck, because it's very mid rangey. Uh, triple Echo Base Defender, double Wing Leader, uh, triple Kanan, double the Force uh, is with me, just for more experience tokens. And again, there's a lot of Force units in here. A uh, double Takedown. Triple Bright Hope, double Obi Wan, triple Luke, double U Wing Reinforcement, double Home One, and double Reinforcement Walker. Really leaning towards the um, sort of end game. Uh, this is just a. It's hard if you're like Red Palpatine and you're like, cool, I got to the end game, and then they still have triple Luke, double Home One, and double Reinforcement Walker. And that reinforcement walker and Luke and home one are all just healing your base. Oh, uh, which is also why I went with the echo base and not ECL. Uh, you just get a lot. My sideboard is triple make an opening double vanquish in case they have a lot more problem units like an Avenger or devastator, uh, triple traitorous in case they have a bunch of small units and I'm playing against aggro and then double redemption in case I need more healing. And uh, that, that's the deck. <laughs> yeah. So I will say, I won't lie and say, I used to have the um, the forces with me in my deck too. I really like that card. Like that's actually, I won't say that's my favorite blue card, but that's like out of an event side. I really like that card. And I, I the problem is I had to figure out what I was going to cut. I, I cut those for the make an opening cards for in an effort to give me a little bit of healing and give me a three cost event that, can kind of control the board a little bit more um because again it, you know for example if somebody puts out what is that uh, crafty smuggler right like make an opening just kills it it doesn't care you have a shield it just says see you have a nice life um so i do genuinely um like that the force is with me though <laughs> like yeah, yeah. it's I, really I really good do. for um like yoda making them a, a four six or Kanan. Um, also, just putting on an Obi-Wan and Luke leader is very good. Just giving them two experience. Uh, like, if you sequence it right and they don't have many responses, like uh, like Obi-Wan, uh, just between all the Lukes, the shields, the experiences, like, your, your Sentinel units um, actually last a lot longer than uh, they should have any right to be. And I have a fair amount of them in here, so it's just locking people down with uh, high health, high attack central units, uh, and also healing. <laughs> so. so I have a I have a question. Would you would you swap your wing leader out for a different? Like, do you have wing leader in there for the space unit, or do you have wing leader in there for the experience token? It's more because more space units. Okay. Like I could sub it out for star vipers, which I, I originally thought, but I played uh, around with the wing leader and again just giving the experience tokens. It's not like my ideal like turn two play, uh, but a little bit later on, giving like double experience to a bright hope is really really frustrating uh, for opponents. Or giving it to Luke Leader, uh, especially when you have Luke's lightsaber, you can just do a lot a lot with Luke Leader and have him just stick around if you give him a couple experience yeah. tokens or the lightsaber. If this deck becomes good, you know what card's going to be super uh, everyone's going to play? Hmm. The one that defeats every upgrade. <laughs> oh, the power power failure? Yeah. yeah. Everybody's going to be like... I mean, there's a reason why that. power failure is in my uh, sideboard for my Velveteen deck. Yeah. It's for this in, like, uh, red chariot decks. Yeah. It's dirt. JJ, do you have any thoughts on, on the list? I mean, it's really solid, honestly. Um, I, I like the the sideboard options they have on there too. Uh, really makes the, the deck really flexible, um, and it, it honestly has a really 
simple yet powerful core uh, for what it has there on the deck. Um, I am curious on the on, cho um, on choosing Echo Base as your base versus like what me and Tanner did, choosing the Energy Conversion Lab. I just, I don't really have a, a decent target I want to ECL out. Like, there's no reason for me to to ambush someone. Generally, I'm sticking around between a bunch of the Sentinels and healing and shields and force that I don't need to drop something else out. But if I play against aggro, the extra five health will, will help out a lot before I start healing it and, and locking it down. Like, I, I just, there's nothing I could ECL. I mean, like, Kanan's good. Don't get me wrong. It's probably the best one. Him and, like, Obi-Wan. But I don't, I don't really need a, a, the ECL out a lot of stuff. I'd rather just have the five health. That's fair. Yeah. And I think that's, that's where the question comes in, right? Like, in my side, it, the discussion is which is really going to be better in the long run for things. So. Yeah, this is really really about just kind of shielding up, healing, and, and locking things down. And then Lion's Dispatcher, too. Like, don't sleep on using him to play, like, Echo Base Defender for two and then giving him a shield with Luke. Like, you just get a free shield out of it. There's a cost of not swinging at your opponent's base for one. Yeah, and it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to to force that... Um, you know, kill right when you have a shield, right? People, people don't want to attack them. Yeah, yeah, it really kind of depends. Also, the, the reinforcement walkers, it's just a little spicy, you know, six nine, but just it's kind of a an end game unit you really have to deal with because it can every time it's swinging in for six, it can heal me for three, or I just draw more cards. <laughs> Um, I think that's a little bit underrated card. It's fun in uh, this deck. Yeah, he just doesn't like my spark of hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to JJ's deck, we call it Luke Puking. I'm going to call it Luke Puking because you called it Luke Puke. And <laughs> Alex loves that name. Um, and you have your deck. I'm going to say your deck is the spiciest deck I've seen, I think, to this day, like you have one Z, two Z, like I don't understand how you get consistency in this deck, and then you have a freaking vigilance in there on top of that. So you're yeah. like, if you <laughs> thought my spark of hope at four was spicy, like that vigilance at six is definitely on the spicy. Oh, I tip. actually like the vigilance a lot more than I like the, yeah. the spark rebellion, uh, legitimately. So it's really good. So the <laughs> like, theme. On. <laughs> the theme of the deck kind of brings everything into focus, right? Because I kind of want to go in with Luke's ability to give a shield out to a unit. Um, and I want that to uh, like further improve on that, right? Or at least work with that, right? Make it very defensive. So for this deck, I went with a good amount of uh, Sentinel cards that are on there. We'll go through it in a second. And then on the back end, you know, helping set up some of the other uh, bigger characters that can go in and uh, finish off the deck. It does delay a little bit. It is kind of a, a turtle deck. Um, just, you know, you have to go through a lot of Sentinel to um, put damage on my uh, my base, uh, which is what I want because, you know, I'm, I'm taking the, the 25 health energy conversion lab um, instead of the, you know, echo base, which is 30, right? So my base can die quicker. So I am also putting some restore in there as well to mix it in. Um, so that way I can at least offset anything that might get through my my sentinel so i got uh, i got one alliance dispatcher in there i wanted to add more but uh, i feel like i want to focus more with the theme um so uh, with alliance dispatcher i also put in a guardian of the wills um just allowing me to uh, play some upgrades uh, a little bit cheaper as well uh, i got uh, mon mothma i have uh, akbar as well um, I got two copies of the Cloud City Wing Guards, which are really cheap three-cost uh, Sentinels. Uh, same thing with the Echo Base Defender. Um, it's a little a better um, Defender there uh, as well. Uh, having two copies of it, uh, two copies of the Homestead Militia. Um, these I will probably play a little bit later uh, when I have more resources, so that way they can get Sentinel, uh, so they're better late game. Um, I have Yoda in there, one copy of Yoda, one copy of Baze. 
um, two copies of the Donna, uh, just so I can make those Sentinels a little bit better when he does come in. Um, and then I have two copies of the Regional Sympathizers, uh, just having in there for the Restore. Uh, I have two copies, uh, sorry, one copy of the Steadfast Battalion. This is a, a unit I want to play when I actually get out my my Luke Leader card out on the on the table. Um, so that way he can um, help buff uh, either him or somebody else when they come out. Um, I have a copy of the uh, Vigilant Honor Guards as well. Um, then I have Bendu. Uh, this is one of the units I would consider ECLing. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi as well. That's the other one that I would consider ECLing as well, um, going out there as well. Uh, and then one of my big targets that I want out there, uh, especially late game, is the 97th Legion. And then a copy of Luke Skywalker as well. On the space side, I have a copy of the uh, Distant Patroller helping me give out a shield token uh, to another uh, blue unit, which is nice. Uh, I have two Arc 170s on there for the Restore, one copy of Bright Hope, uh, two system patrol crafts, which are um, fairly useful uh, sentinel crafts for the space sides. Um, the Corellian fighter, I was a little iffy on it, but a 4-4 four, four sentinel is okay. And then I have a copy of Home 1 and one copy of Redemption. Um, and then I went a little crazy with the events. Um, I got two copies of Confiscate, uh, which helps me. I put it in there for the event that somebody does a traitorous um, and takes away like one of my Sentinels. I definitely want to have it on there. Uh, it binds all things. I have two copies of that as well. Um, I have one Make an Opening, um, another Strike True, uh, a copy of You're My Only Hope uh, to help me uh dig for some stuff as well, especially late game um, when I'm, if I'm losing and I'm about to die, having this, uh, this card available can help me swing the game. Um, and then two copies of the forces with me, uh, two copies of vigilance, a uh, really great card. I think this was something I had to include in there just because it does give me the option to uh, not only heal, um, but also give out a shield or defeat an enemy unit um, that I have to get out there. Um, really great for four points. Uh, same thing with Vanquish, allowed me to defeat one of those higher-end, um, bigger-costed leaders, or sorry, non-leader units. Uh, and then two copies of Electro Staff, which is really, really great with Sentinel cards. Um, you're giving them a plus two, plus two, and you're when they do get attacked, the attacker is getting one less attack on them, which is really great. Um, and then Luke's lightsaber, just had to add that in there just because I was going to have Obi-Wan and Luke in there. I wanted to have the ability to have that uh, that buff to them, and then two copies of Traitors as well to finish it. All right, so I have a quick question. I have a couple of questions. I have, a, <laughs> I, I have a million questions with with this. So okay. we're going to ignore Krell. I'm just going to ignore that because that's like a seven cost unit, and I don't think that's good. But with a, a lot of the rest of the stuff in the, that you have in there, like how do you like? Do you just not care about consistency aspect inside of this deck? Because like traditionally like for example you have one alliance dispatcher like if mm -hmm. you don't get it if you get it early game are you just resourcing it and not caring you know um, um i would probably hold it until i have at least two uh sentinel units and then deploying that later on like if i'm going if i know that i'm not going to get the initiative uh based on you know how everything's playing out this is the card that I would probably play last um, to make sure that I can have it behind a couple of sensitive units, and that way it's harder for my opponent to take it out unless, of course, they have an event card, which, you know, I don't have anything I could do to really prevent it. But hopefully, if I can um, get a shielded, um, I, have, I, I, I will make my opponent work that much harder to take it out. Because, I mean, like, to me, I almost feel like dumping two of those... Uh, whatever those four cost resistant sympathizer things and putting mm -hmm. two more Lukes in would be like the way I would go, right? Like I just, I would want three Lukes in, in there personally. I would like to get more aggro in it. My only concern is that uh, because I have five less health, having units that can help me restore makes up that difference. So I, I'm feeding a lot of my Sentinels out there to prevent a lot of the base attacks but in the event that you know my opponent is able to get through, I have a couple of saboteurs out there. I want to be able to keep up restore and keep my health up as much as I can. 
um, to make up for that difference. Because it, it can be, there can be um, times where a mass amount of damage can go into my base, and I need to be able to recoup from that. And that's kind of a mechanic that I want to use. I will absolutely love to replace some of those sympathizers for like a bigger loop, but yeah. And then the last question, I i mean, I guess it's not the question, but you you know Luke only works on rubble units, right? Like, so you're... Yes. Okay, yeah. so I just want to make sure, like you said, Sentinel and I'll say... Which well, is why I have a blend uh, of it. I, I know okay. I, I have a couple that are just rubble, um, and then I have some that are non-rubble, but they're cheap enough that I would include them on there just in case, you know. And by rebels, you guys mean heroic, like the white yeah, aspect. Sorry, not, yeah, yeah the white aspect. Yes. It's X, X, X wing terminology. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Obi Wan's not a rebel. Neither is Yoda. It's actually like yeah, pretty relevant. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Ah, uh, oh, man. Command. I'm not sure about that. I like like I don't mind vigilance because you actually can give Luke a shield off of it, which is pretty important because the shield is any uh, any unit, and healing five from the base is really good. Uh, just I don't see too much in for command because like the main appeal for command is that you can get an extra resource off of it, but if you're paying six for it, you're not getting good return. So I don't know. Yeah, that's fair. But it does have a lot of Sentinel. I'll give you, I'll give you that. It's fun. <laughs> uh, I love Sentinel units, so it's a nice yeah. one that bogs down the game. Because if you have a good late game, uh, then you should win, right? Theoretically. Yeah. I, I originally uh, one of the uh, the things I wanted to um, add on there as a um, as a sideboard as well uh, was the the triple laser uh, refit for my space units, uh, which can help me at least no, uh, use my space units. But don't do um, that. yeah, I, I I ultimately took it off just because I felt like there wasn't enough of like a good use for it. So yeah, the hardport heavy blaster that's the one I was looking at. Yeah, I've I've tried to play around with that. I just. Mm. I had it in a sealed deck a couple of times because I ran like a ton of vehicles in there. Like where half my deck was vehicles and that was kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> but other, other than that, like unless you're going for a vehicle based deck, I don't, yeah, the, the heavy laser cannon, whatever that is in SW terms, terms yeah. it's uh, that's good. Yeah. I think for me really, JJ, the bigger thing is like, I think Mon Mothma, Akbar could be swapped out like for something you have in there for a two of um like i would almost give up akbar f i would almost give up on mothma for a echo base defender a third one um i do like blaze personally i would give up command for another blaze <laughs> like i just well, i i i would not play command i i wouldn't play command or Krell, either of them for the yeah cost. so i i would i would definitely agree with you with akbar um, however, Mothma for me feels like that's my insurance for when I mulligan get into another bad draw, right? Um, if I need to get a good rebel card out there, um, immediately, especially like a good sentinel card, I feel like a Mothma is my, is my way out, um, to, to ensure I get that there. She's not doing anything much offensively, but she just helps me get that rebel card that I need when I need it. Um, and uh, and then be able to hopefully play it that turn as well. So that's what she's there for, just mainly for that draw. Um, but beyond that, yeah. And that's fine. I, I just, the consistency is going to be harder in this deck. Like, I would want, I, I don't know. I think you could give up Bendu as well. Like, I think you could dump Bendu for at least one more loot. I, I don't know. Like I think I I like I don't hate the 97th Legion personally. Like it's that's my replacement for Vader. Um, Alex taught me that. That's what you can you you can. That's the cheap version of Vader that you can use. That's it's just a pain to get rid of, right? Well, yeah. I mean, seven, seven, seven. Yeah. While, while I do agree that Luke is probably better, my my biggest thing about Bendu is that especially when you're using ECL. Um, you're immediately getting him out there. He's immediately attacking, and then he's going to provide a two cost bonus. Um, you know, uh, allowing me to. Yeah, to but get you're that not you're not getting them out till you have eight resources down. So, I, and I, Alex, I don't know. This yeah. is this is probably a, a question of does he 
is does ECL only look at printed costs or does it look at printed costs plus aspect costs? That's a, that's a question uh, we've never sure dealt with. Is, I don't think. Um, I'm pretty sure it's what you'd be paying for it. Like, so it would a- account for the aspects. Yeah. So if that's the case, then you, Bendu is worthless as an ECL target. Yeah. Because it's okay. an eight cost. I, and again, you know, JJ, that's a you know that is a that that's a rules question that should probably be asked in a forum. So if somebody is listening to this and they know the answer to that. Hey, send to tell us. I would love to know the answer to that. That's I mean, like what I don't know. Ninety percent sure it's it does include aspects. Like I'm pretty sure I read that okay. somewhere else. Yeah, and I'm sure it's in the rules. I don't know. I got to read the rules this week anyway. But, um, <laughs> yeah. But but if that's the case, then Bendu is worthless. Like, uh, no offense. Like I I feel at once you get to eight resources, you're better off playing a second Luke or a second redemption. For Christ's sake, you're better playing off a second redemption and stealing damage off other units or a second home one if you're Alex. So, you know, I don't know. Other than that, I think it's a, it, that looks like a fun deck. Um, I would like to see how that works for you. Um, Clyde. Nope. Yeah. You can, you can play it as, as printed cost. Can you? Okay. Yep. Nice. Okay. So even if, so even though he costs eight, you can still ECL him at, Hold on. Abilities that refer to a card's cost always refer to its printed cost regardless of modifiers. Abilities that let you play a card require you to pay the card's cost unless specified otherwise. So, no, it does It does include aspects. They just have two different rules okay. clarifications on this that are contradictory. That's weird. Yeah. So that, that yeah, would so be my, it, my change would be then to dump Bendu immediately. Like, that's just he's not worth it for the Sentinel at that point. Yeah. Like you, you would be better off putting another Luke in if that's who you, if that's what you're looking to do, or another Obi One. There you go. You put another Obi One in if you're looking for another ECL target. Obi One's yeah. really good as an ECL target. Um, so, I like I lo- I like Obi One personally, myself, and I get very annoyed when my opponent plays Obi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like playing Waylay, like playing Yellow, just so I can Waylay Obi One. I hate him so much. <laughs> so all right well that was our for a cause segment um why well, am we are going to wrap up here shortly i do want to go through a little bit of the orlando 5k so traditionally in our x-wing podcast we used to do like super in-depth analysis and i'm not going to tell you that we're not going to get to that point the issue i have right now is, the big issue i have right now is that there is not a such thing as a meta right now i'm i don't care what people say i can tell you that these are the things that are winning and these are things that have a higher probability but we don't we haven't had enough tournaments and we don't have enough data to actually genuinely say this is what you should be running no matter what and you know like amg is always traditionally um for x-wing has always traditionally kind of critiqued and chastised our community when we say oh we've solved the meta in three three months or oh we solved the meta in three weeks and Alex is a good, I pick on Alex a lot you know, because that's, that, that's what I like to do. But in fairness, Alex is the guy that does like to break metas with some of the different things that he has created or built. Um, and, and in X-Wing, that worked out very well for the most part until he told everybody how to defeat his uh, meta breaking list. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's that. But which is fine. Like, that's what our podcast is here for. We're not here. We're not here. We're, we are. We're here as if you want to learn how to become like a better player. That that's that's what we're here for. We're not here to be elitist and win everything. Like none of us care that much. Um, You know, five thousand dollars would sure be nice. But whatever. I mean, we can. It's that's like if somebody said there's a hundred thousand dollar tournament, we would not tell you what our decks are. <laughs> we would <100% laughs> go to that. That's a little bit different because a hundred thousand dollars is a huge difference between 5k, 5k, whatever. It's just that's money off, off the nose. But the problem I have is that there is not a solved meta. And I want to state this, and, I, and maybe that's a controversial saying in this community. I don't know. Like, I, I come from card games, went to miniatures, and now I'm back into card games, and I'm telling you, there is not a solved meta. This is not a specifically solved meta and there's things that are going to come out of this that counter other things and you have your rock paper scissors discussion right and that's kind of what we're at right now is they have some of those things and so what i want to do is is for to kind of wrap up the show tonight um for the next like five to ten minutes i want to talk a little bit about the orlando 5k 
why JJ should have been there to play in it, even though he left Orlando <laughs> and ditched it. And um, there's a player you're going to see if you, if you listen to our X-Wing podcast, there's a gentleman on there that, that actually um, plays X-Wing that did decently well at our, at, at worlds this year and has, and has now officially done so similarly in um, unlimited. So let's go back. Come on, come on, computer computers. My computer doesn't want to work today. All right, here we go. Now we're back. So the 5K, this is kind of the top 16 breakdown. Um, so they had uh, like 100 and uh, was it 134 players that played total. Top, They did a top 16 cut. They did eight rounds of Swiss and the top 16 cut. So if you played, kudos to you because that was a long day. That's a, that was a long day. Yeah. Um, there was four Boba Fett's, four Sabines, three Vader's, one Palpatine, one Krennic, one Luke, one Leia, and one Han Solo, which we're going to definitely talk about tonight because that's the list that interests me the most out of all of them. Um, total breakdown, Boba Fett had the highest uh, percentage with the lowest win rate. So normally in our X-Wing podcast, we would actually give you conversation pieces, but Unlimited, um, <coughs> Eek Pair, nobody has given us that um, specific tournament software, right, that we could collect this in. And I will encourage I will heavily encourage the unlimited community to not worry about who's going to make money on this, but to 100 percent. How do we figure out how to get software like we have with pattern analyzer? And if you aren't from X-Wing and you and you just solely listen to us because unlimited 100 percent, go look at pattern analyzer and look at the software. Eek pair has created like the, the the genius software like it has statistics. It's actually statistically based conversations, but everything is API driven. So right now we have no places to submit tournament results and that's what we need is we need places to submit tournament results and force the community to do that until ffg gives us something great <laughs> yeah um that's that's a, a haha because i don't believe that'll ever happen but we need that <laughs> we don't like ffg is not going to give us what we want so we need to as a community come together and build this because i'm telling you right now that's how we can decipher this because yes you see 37 boba fets but when they're only you know x percent of the top cut and they had like lower winning rates it's the same way as an x-wing yeah you could run a vader you know list and think you're hot crap but it doesn't mean anything if the majority of empires aren't doing well and that's the conversation piece that we are missing in a limited right now hence why we're only going to cover a little bit of the tournament p- tournament piece until we get some of that um so anyway, whatever. There's 37 Boba Fett's, 24 Sabines. There was 15 Vaders, um, 12 or 15 Idens, which I think is very um, that's crazy telling that no Idens make top cut. Um, that that's pretty big. Uh, there was 12 Leias. There was only eight Palpatines, and oh look, there's a Palpatine in cut. <clears throat> um, seven Krennics, and there's a Krennic in cut. There was only five Lukes, five Lukes, baby, and one make cut. <laughs> like that's crazy. Um, but if you go down to there is only four Han Solos and one of them make that. So um, this is kind of the tournament bracket. Um, we're not going to go through it. That is what it is. You can come back and reflect on it um, as you want. But really the top list, the one that won the whole event was by Guy with a Vader blue deck. And no, this is not the shield deck. This is a Vader deck with a 30 health base. Alex, what is this specific deck? Do you want to, I, I, I don't know. Do we want to go through everything in the deck? I, I don't, this is the winning control deck. Yeah. Well, I mean, we should definitely go over the winner, right? Um, so this is a blue Vader deck. So, uh, uh, from what I heard, it didn't even really have a lot of, um, trouble winning the final game. Uh, but that has triple uh, Stormtrooper, one Force Lightning, one Restock, and also of note, Restock can restock itself because cards go to the discard pile and then you like use their ability with events. So it's kind of an infinite loop, sort of. Uh, triple Inferno 4, triple Entrance, triple Force Choke, double Viper Pro Droid, triple Power of the Dark Side, triple Make an Opening, triple Open Fire, Double I am your father. Triple uh, Lieutenant Childress. Or Childson. Sorry. 
than a job. Yeah, that's like <laughs> someone else. Uh, shout them. I got to read. Uh, triple Vigilance, which is why it's not too bad. Uh, triple System pl- Patrol Craft, uh, Triple Takedown, One Interceptor, Double Vanquish, Triple Super Laser Blast, Double Palpatine, Triple Avenger. In the sideboard, they have Triple Repair, Double Devotion, Double Vader's Lightsaber, One. Uh, God, what is that? Uh, power of the Dark Side? Power, no, no. One, um, the one unless you just... The one unless you just grab oh, it. Oh, search your feelings. Oh, search your feelings, right, yeah. I have trouble remembering that card because no one should ever play it ever yet. Uh, <laughs> one bombing run and one for surrender. So basically this deck kind of just controls with uh, Vader's pings and all the out of hand uh, damage slash destruction. And then drops uh, a child sin for like a four four with sentinel or a five five with sentinel and tells you the hold up or waiting until vader comes out and i can win the game by doing that and then depending on my triple avengers for the end game yeah it is very interesting that the childson is that if you go back to the streams the childson is favored like he plays childson all the time like mm-hmm. that's 100 percent. that is the key to that specific deck and like the like because of the the um the fact that you're able to give him upgrades and we don't have a lot of upgrade removal right now it works very well uh what is the name of the card that you uh side in oh power failure yes power <laughs> failure should be definitely a sideboard include now for people because of this type of a bloody deck because you can just play power failure for what is it? Two cost? Is that a two cost? Yep, two yep. cost. Destroy as many upgrades as you yep. like on the yeah. Oh, and boy, by the way, you just play Chelsea, and I now just played a two cost event to kill all of your stupid upgrades on that thing, and then I can kill him with either a unit or a <clears throat> another card. Yeah, I mean, and people forget that like entrenched. Uh, for a really long time, uh, very, very early on in this game, like before this game even came out, people running entrenched all the time. And that's a very good way to uh, ensure, like, if they're going heavy space or something, they just don't attack your base. Mm-hmm. Because you can't attack bases when you're entrenched, and you can put it on your opponent's cards. Yes. So that's a very good way of preventing some damage if you don't have a board, which this deck, uh, you know, doesn't have a lot, doesn't have a lot of board. Yeah, and they're using entrenched uh, uh, usually on the like the Boba Fett's, right? You know that it's that's a mm-hmm. big uh, tech card for for Boba Fett's for Hans, right? Like y- you can you can put this on a Han, you can put this on I don't know, maybe Bo- Boba Fett's probably the bigger target in in reality. Maybe Especially Alea. So many people bring them. Yeah, Alea too. Alea doesn't want to see an entrenched. I mean, yeah, not a lot of people do. Uh, so this is kind of an interesting, like, hard control. You know, the Vigilance gives you five health off on your base. Uh, you know, heal it back. You got the triple uh, make an opening. You know, that that heals two every time and also can kill units. Uh, the I Am Your Father's possibly is probably just a draw three. But honestly, I'd probably take seven damage on my unit and not letting a control player draw their cards. So Yeah. That's what I found. Um, that's the only reason I don't like that card as much is because if nobody has units out, it doesn't work. And then if somebody has like a crap unit, they just take it on the crap unit and you're like, <sighs> like an Akbar. <laughs> Does, do you care if you lose an Akbar after you've played them? Probably not. It is really annoying that it uh, kills Luke Leader. Very thematic. <laughs> yeah. Straight up because it is seven damage. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair. That's <laughs> that's hilarious. That's an I intentional like, design choice. <laughs> um, I like this deck. I don't like the force surrender one of. I would actually rather just have two bombing runs than a force surrender. Okay, I'd rather have three bombing runs than that stupid um, draw card for four costs. Like I don't understand that card either for four costs. Like that just seems like a shit card. But that's just me. I mean, I know like it's not the worst because it is a control deck and you can it's essentially playing like a fourth copy of um super laser blast if you need it or you know a fourth copy of whatever card you're trying to go for 
at the cost of four resources. But I also don't think it's that great of a card yet because there's not a lot of payoff for it. I'm sure it will be a lot better in the future. Also, I played against this deck at my uh, locals with my Red Palpatine deck. Um, guess whose endgame is better than that? <laughs> uh, I would say Red Palpatine is. <laughs> yes, and it's it's uh, it's kind of funny. Oh, did you like, just play an Avenger I can steal? Thank you. <laughs> oh, no. It's like, oh, you played an Avenger? Cool. Here's a Devastator that I ozzled in, so now it's just swinging in for 10. Uh, but yeah, that... Red Palpatine is very good anti-control deck because your end game is generally better. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's cool that like something way outside of what normal people were looking at for the quote-unquote meta uh, won one of a big tournament like this. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. I do like I said. I do like this deck. Um, this is a little bit different than the Blue Vader deck I was playing, but it's it's kind of similar. I am, if anybody wants, uh, I am one Vigilance, one Super Blast, and one Vig- er, uh, Avenger away from being able to play this deck. So if anybody wants to hook up Tanner, I have a Luke. I have an extra Luke that I'm happy to trade off, but not for all three, of course. But unless you're really spicy and want to help me out, then I, Jesus. <laughs> then I would do that. All right. Now we're into, um, so I put, why do I have two of these in here? All right, well, yeah, we're, all right. we're missing yeah, one. We're, of, we're missing one of them. So, um, I wanted to cover this Luke Green deck specifically just because we um, covered Luke Green tonight. Um, so, JJ, what is this Luke Green deck? So, this one is brought to us by Fee Lawful. Uh, so, we got Luke here uh, with Echo Beast. Uh, he's got three copies of Alliance Dispatcher, three copies of R2, three copies of the Restored Arc 170s, uh, two copies of Luke's Lightsaber, three copies of Devotion, uh, three copies of Battlefield uh, Marine, then we've got two copies of Yoda, one copy of Admiral Akbar, three Echo Base Defenders, three Resupplies, three Fleet Lieutenants, and sh- oh, there it goes. There we go. Sorry. Uh, three <laughs> Fleet Lieutenants, uh, three Wing Leaders. Uh, three copies of Kanan Jarrus, which is a spicy take on there. Um, then we got one takedown, three Bright Hopes, three Obi-Wans, three Lukes, uh, two Ewing reinforcements, and two, uh, one copy of Redemption, and two Home Ones uh, f- to complete that particular deck there. Uh, definitely really, uh, really spicy deck. I like this like uh, I like this deck a lot. Actually, um, has a very good balance. Um, you have quite a lot of uh, good offense they could put out there with uh, with Luke. Uh, having that U-wing reinforcements is really great late game uh, when you're able to bring out more units there. Um, I do think it's a little light on the space there, um, but I guess you know you're just backing up those Arc 170s with Wing Leader. Um, and then later on, uh, you're able to bring out Home One and Redemption out there uh, to help out uh, your forces there, as well as um, as well as Bright Hope. So, uh, but yeah, definitely a really really good deck. I like it a lot. Yeah, I think really the only difference, the big differences we're seeing is a devotion. Um, that devotion piece there is. A little bit different um alex i don't know do you, do you ever i've never ran devotion so i mean it gives you more healing because uh, they get um <clears throat> sorry i'm dying cough okay no we're good um yeah it gives you restore <laughs> two when you play it right so you, you get more healing you got a plus one plus one so you can help trade it can knock up your echo base defender to like um, four health, which gets it out of range of like stormtroopers and things like that. Uh, you can put it on a leader Luke, and every time he's attacking, now he's hitting for five. He has eight health. He's restoring two and giving a unit a shield. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, it's just more healing, it, and it's, it's it's not bad. I feel like it's a little bit more of a, a sideboard uh, piece. Uh, than like a three of in this deck, but uh, you know I'm not top we scoring at a we, giant uh, tournament. You know, yeah. we didn't we didn't go to a time. we haven't gone to a five k yet. So, all right. Well, I just like I said, I wanted to throw this in there because we didn't have we specifically did not have this deck in our 
Um, so also total coincidence <laughs> that like a blue green Luke Dag did well. It is that yeah. Alex Alex went and looked it up because you know I, I did not. He's like he's like let's do, do this. He, I want to do <laughs> green Luke because I think that's interesting, and then lo and behold, someone actually does well with it. Yeah. All right. So the runner up was Reflex um, Andrew Cox. If you don't know who he is, he uh, is from our X Wing community. So uh, he went top two worlds last year too. Yep. Runner yeah, up. Yeah, he was the runner up. Yeah. Just perpetually running up. <laughs> yep. We we could call him the official bench warmer. Is that what we get to call him, or do we call him the official <laughs> runner up? Uh, people who ride the bench don't play top two. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> um, so we're not going to go through this whole. This is a Boba Green deck. We're not going to go through the whole deck. Um, so we're not going to talk about the whole deck just for the pure fact that we've. I don't know. We technically haven't covered it, but other people have. I think really the discussion point is some of the the pieces that they have in there. So Reflex is from, they used to be called the Hyperloops, and now they're called KTOD, um, and they're uh, more of a competitive uh, podcast group um, that you can join and see some of their their competitive pieces. This here, um, specifically, like there's a couple of pieces in here that I wanted to, to, to touch on. One of them is the Recruit, which I did not know he had in here. Um so that was a piece that I kind of put as a sideboard into my Luke Green deck. They're using Recruit to dig for different um, pieces that they need inside of their deck. They also have the other spicy one in that I've not seen a lot of is that the Cunning. Um, cunning is typically not seen in a, a Boba Green deck. It's, it becomes a six cost rate. Right? Um, I still, I don't know if I like cunning personally. Um, but again, I have different experiences with cunning. Like when I run a control deck, if you exhaust my characters, I don't care as much, uh, when I'm trying to, you know, build up to the next stage. Uh, so go ahead and do that, leave them on the board <laughs> and it, you still have to contend with them next turn. But, um, I still, th I think cunning is a little spicy. I do not personally like cunning in that deck, but that's just me. Um, that plus four extra attack is pretty sizable that you can get with cunning and that that helps you finish games out. Um, also, I believe he's got two Gamorrean guards in there, too, and that's not like a super typical thing, but it does ha uh, slow other opposing like Boba Fett's down just because it's a four four Sentinel conditional yeah. Sentinel if you have another yellow unit, but you probably do. Yeah, you either have Bosk or your seven fleet defender or Boba Fett or Boba leader. You know I mean? There's like a million things that you would have. Yeah, It's out. interesting to note. He does not have any of the cartel spacers. That's kind of what it seemed like he took out for those. Yeah. And I like that. I do like the Gamorrean guards. I think those are spicy. I also like the uh, relentless sideboard. I think that's hilarious. Um, obviously this uh, suffers to Luke or to Boba blue or <laughs> Boba blue Vader blue. Um, if you go back and watch it, you will 100% see the the catastrophic um, what Vader Blue can do to this deck. Um, but I do like Relentless. I just I do genuinely like that card as overall as a kind of a surprise type card. Um, but notice they have double ramp. Uh, the question I have is, could you get away with not having double ramp in that deck? Almost all the green boba decks like that have triple resupply, triple super laser tech. It just makes it consistent, and then you can get boba fed out earlier, and that cascades pretty bad. And then your fire sprays out on like turn four now, so it can get silly. All right. Any other call outs from this deck that we want to look at that's different? No, I think those are just the, the main differences right there. So it's the, the recruit and uh, double conning and the Gamorreans. All right, and we go to the last Han Red deck, which I apologize. I did not have time to put this in a proper format. This is the way they submitted the deck. Um, this is a Han Red with two Greedo, three R2-D2, three, three CPO, which I'm just going to say, like, I like the thematic piece of this already, just period. Um, two Leia, two Bodhi Rooks, which that's a little bit spicy right there, just because you have Bodhi Rook as... Um, that's a six cost or a five cost right there. Um, 
you have three force throw, one lay waylay. Like, why not just get rid of the one lay way waylay, right? Like, why run one? I don't I don't understand that. He logic. has actually he has two. It's just um it's just Is it somewhere now. else. Okay. No, that might actually be a sideboard now that I think about that. Okay. Yeah, and his I'm, sideboard's on the all the way on the right there with the extra Greedo, extra Waylay, extra Bodhi. Okay. It just seemed weird as a as a side thing. Uh three Wolf, three K two SO, one Lando, two Han. I think you should have four Han or three Han, but um I love Han so much. Uh, three fleet lieutenants, three Ezra's, um, three of my favorite card that Alex will eventually admit is the best card in the game uh, currently right now. I actually uh, took so, them out of my Han decks because yeah, they were useless. You. They are not. Uh, Spark of the Rebellion. One, is that an outmaneuver? Sneak attack. Uh, sneak attack. Sneak okay. attack, yep. I like that card too. One, or they, he technically they have two change of heart. No, see the, everything on the right, like those ten cards on the right. That's a sideboard. So Greedo is a sideboard, change of heart sideboard, Bodhi's sideboard, Waylay's sideboard, okay. triple Wolf sideboard, triple Fang Fighter is I sideboard. Okay, so then he has one change of heart in the deck. Yep. And then we have three Force Surrender, two Heroic Sacrifice, three Falcon, three Red Three, three Wing Leader. One black one, which I think is also a little bit spicy because that's not my favorite yeah. card. Um, and then three su- or two surprise strike, correct? Yeah. Yep. I yep. don't know. I've never so. I've never played this deck ever. I have played against Red Han, and like it can dump a lot of units really fast, and like it's a very fast, very aggressive deck. Um, just because of the nature of, of Han uh, himself. But I also like Green Han more. It just seems like there's more synergy there. Uh, but, you know, he's got the R2-D2, C-3PO combo, so you can look at the top card. If it's not good, dump it or pull it with C-3PO. You got Ezra to play off the top. I mean, it's just mostly using your deck in ways that you don't typically see it because Han doesn't have a lot of hand Oh, uh, actually, I'm, I'm surprised he's not running two black ones. Honestly, I probably would if I was running a, a red Han like that, just to refill the hand faster. Yeah, uh, because you can discard zero cards and then just draw three and have a four four space unit, uh, which is pretty nice. I would I would also do double change of heart instead of like triple four surrender. Just take one of those out, double change of heart because. Um, if you're like, because you can ramp up to it real fast with with Han, right? And actually be able to take out a, a pretty important piece, yeah. like change of heart on a turn, like you actually need it. Yeah, and also that, heroic sacrifice it if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I love the change of heart in the aspect of you could steal something that's ready, and then force your opponents either deal with their own unit or just use their own unit to swing into something else. Like I. Yeah. I, I I don't like change of heart as much as I like traitorous, but um, there's a cost difference, right? But I I do think change of heart yeah. is actually really good as a card that I, I think a lot of people aren't using it now, and I think that's kind of sad. Like I really think that it's a better card than what people are giving it credit for. The Bodhi it's hooks really- though, I don't understand why you have double Bodhi Bodies in there. I don't know. I guess Han, you know what? I guess Han gets all the extra cards. Does it really matter? Maybe not. You know, um, I mean, uh, maybe it's uh, like a tech against control, right? Because you're, you you can't discard a unit from it with Pody. You could just discard one of their um, non-unit cards. So it's good against control, I guess. I mean, you could dump like an entrenched. Or True. if you're playing against Tanner, dump his Spark of the Rebellion before he gets oh to use God. it. And that'd be fine. <laughs> would yes. Not. I'll tell you what, if you play Bodhi Hook to, at five costs to get rid of my Spark of the Rebellion, go ahead and do that. I, I think, think I, I think I've won that. I think I've won that exchange. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting. I've seen um, a lot more of my locals play um, Red Han. I'm also a little bit iffy on Tarkintown, honestly. Uh, and this kind of thing, this kind of seems like you just need to hit fast so you can kind of sacrifice your own base health just to, to speed it up, but I mean, it can be useful if, um, you know, you're, you start swinging in and they take initiative. You can start choosing who you want to Tarkin down. 
Yeah, fair enough. I think maybe we we should probably play around with a a, a Han red deck. I don't I don't know, maybe that's another thing that we can do in a couple of weeks or something like that. I do think Han red has some viability. I like Han green better personally, but um, I think that's more of a play style thing. So, all right. Well, that was kind of again. You know, we will cover as a podcast. We will cover some of the competitive events, but. I have a hard time wanting to spend a lot of time when there's not really a meta per se. We are going to the store showdown season. So that is coming up here. I do think that that's a viable discussion. I just don't know how much I like some of these. I don't know. I've not come from a card game experience where I've played in high level, high cost and high reward type events. So I don't know how they actually change the meta. Um, for a store showdown like i mean how many people are going to run a some of those boba greens or like i'll i'll be honest that blue vader is not a super fun deck to run it's it's pretty boring in my opinion it's a very boring deck <laughs> like it's i ran it is it's it's boring to me it's boring so um you, are you going to run that in a short sh- showdown when you're only like you're only playing for a mace windu you know you get I would copies. love for people to play that in a store showdown. I okay, dunk so. on that. Deck. That'd be great. All right. <laughs> Besides that fact, I'm just saying is like you're you're probably running more of what you like to run than anything else. So, um, but anyway, so we will be covering more of those things. Um, our podcast is going to be a little bit more geared to playing deck building and that type of stuff versus like covering a million of the meta statistics that I don't think are super meta at this point. Um, but. You guys have any other thoughts before we round out the episode for the night? No, I think uh, I think we we are going to see a lot more um, surprising decks that make it uh, for these type of events. You know, you'll see different combos that, you know, things that people haven't thought of before. And that's what makes the, the game exciting, especially with the the new wave coming out. Um, it's going to be really fun to see uh, all the. The, the current decks being changed up with all the new stuff coming out there. So yeah, just can't wait to see what uh, what crazy combos we pull off next. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm excited for uh, store season, store champ season, or no, well, store showdown season. All right. Well, fair enough. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We will be back next week with more Planning Face Syndicate, and we will be talking about Star Wars Unlimited as well as our X-Wing podcast. We did not do an X-Wing podcast um, this week just for the pure fact that um, we had a lot of uh, unlimited content I wanted to cover. Um, next week, we will we'll probably go back to kind of the dual podcast uh, scene. So if you watch both of them, there you go. Um, and I would encourage you, if, if you like either of our content, um, it would be super awesome if you went and gave us a rating and kind of gave us a thumbs up on any of your podcast catchers uh, that that does help with some of the reach that we get. And we are newer getting into the unlimited podcast scene. And I don't like to shill and, you know, be that guy, but I'm going to show a little bit, just say, Hey, I think our podcast is pretty good. We've got three amazing people and we all come with different backgrounds, different skill sets and um, different opinions. Uh, Spark of the rebellion is still the better of the three opinions, but you know, I mean, it's the same. <laughs> um, we'll see, I guess. So, Anyway, with that, being, with that being said, we're going to be back next week, 9 p.m. Eastern, 2100 Eastern or 0100 UTC. Come join us, join our syndicate, and be amazed at what you can see. With that being said, thank you. Have a good night, and we'll see you on the Flippity Flop. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. <laughs>